What's up, Hillside Kids? Sean here, I'm excited you're with us today. We have an amazing lesson, continuing to learn about Jesus and all the healing he does. And of course, we're gonna worship with our friends Ashley and Jenna. But first, I think it's time for a very special game called Screaming Goat or Fainting Goat. You will be shown a goat on the screen and you have to decide whether it's a screaming goat or a fainting goat. Pretty simple, right? Let's dive in. Does anyone else want a pet goat after this? Maybe not the screaming ones. The fainting ones could be fun, but maybe a little scary. I don't know, we'll see. Well, now that we're all warmed up, I think it's the perfect time to dive into some worship with our friends Ashley and Jenna. Hi friends, I'm so excited to get to worship with you today. We are gonna jump into a super fun song. It has some great dance moves, so let's get going. Step out of the gray, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let Prison 
shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. There is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the Spirit is here Let there be freedom Let there be freedom Hey Hillside families, it's Sarah and I'm back with this week's edition of Questions from Kids. This week's question is from Elizabeth and she wants to know, how many questions did Jesus ask? Jesus asked a lot of questions. In fact, I think it was his favorite way of answering them. In total, Jesus asked 309 questions. Now, that doesn't mean he didn't know the answer to those, but when we're given a straightforward yes or no answer, we might miss the importance of the answer that we're given. So Jesus got creative. When someone would ask him this or that, he would respond with a question. And this gave people the opportunity to use their imagination to find that answer. He also answered in these things called parables. These are stories that left people thinking about the importance of that story and how it would give them an answer. And it would push them to use their time with God to find that answer. How cool of Jesus to not be demanding or use the authority that he could have, but to humbly and lovingly help us find these answers that we're seeking. That's all for this week, guys, but don't forget to submit your guys' questions so that we can answer them next week. I'll see you guys then. Bye. Hi, Hillside Kids, Cynthia here again, and I am so happy to be with you guys. This Sunday, we're gonna continue learning about how Jesus is our healer. Let's check out the story. Jesus stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a large crowd gathered around him. Jairus, one of the leaders in the synagogue, fell at Jesus' feet and begged for his help. My daughter is about to die. Please come touch her so she will be healed and live, he said. Jesus went with Jairus, and many people followed, crowding around him. In the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had seen many doctors and had spent all her money trying to get better, but no one could help her. She was getting worse. The woman said to herself, if I touch even Jesus' clothes, I will be healed. She came up behind Jesus in the crowd and touched his clothes. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she knew she was healed. At that moment, Jesus felt that power had gone out of him. He turned around. Who touched my clothes? He asked. Jesus' disciples pointed out that many people were crowded around him, but Jesus kept looking around. The woman, knowing she was healed, came forward and fell before Jesus. She told him what had happened. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. You are healed. While Jesus was speaking, some men came from Jairus' house and told Jairus, Your daughter is dead. Do not bother Jesus anymore. Jesus heard what the men said, and he told Jairus, Do not be afraid. Just believe. Jesus and three of his disciples went to Jairus' house. 
People there were crying and wailing loudly. Why are you crying? Jesus asked. The child is not dead. She is sleeping. The people laughed because they did not believe Jesus, and he told them all to leave. Jesus took Jairus and his wife into the room where the child was. He took the girl by the hand and said, Little girl, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began walking around. Jairus and his wife were amazed. Jesus told them to give the girl some food and to not tell anyone what had happened. By healing the woman and raising the little girl from the dead, Jesus showed his power as the Messiah. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to save people from sin and death. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and changes us to be more like his son. I love this story so much. Did you notice that Jesus pointed to the woman's faith? She just knew in her heart that if she could just touch Jesus or even just, just touch his clothes, that she would be healed. That's called having big faith. I wonder if I have big faith. I wonder if I believe with all of my heart that Jesus would drop me off at Disneyland. Would that happen? Oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not how it works. Jesus is not like an imaginary genie. You can't just ask him for wishes and expect him to grant them. What are your three wishes? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. God is not like this. I don't think having big faith is just making a bunch of wishes to God and hoping they come true. I think having big faith is truly believing in who Jesus is and trusting him no matter what the result. Now, let's talk about Jarius and his daughter. Sometimes I stop and think about how Jarius must have felt. He believed in his heart that Jesus could heal his daughter but he was probably feeling very nervous and in a huge hurry. He wanted Jesus to come right away. But they were in a large crowd and then Jesus stopped to ask who touched his clothes. I probably would have felt impatient and frustrated. Can you imagine? Jesus, did you forget about my daughter? Do we really have time for you to talk about your clothes? Help! Jarius might have felt that way too, but Jesus' power isn't limited by time or even space. Jesus didn't need to arrive on time or lay hands on her or even travel to her at all. If Jesus wanted to, he could have simply said, your daughter is healed, and it would have been true. But by going through the steps of traveling to her, Jesus was making more opportunities for God's glory to be revealed to us. Jesus can do the impossible. No one knew how to help the sick woman, but just a touch of Jesus' clothes and she was healed. No one could bring Jairus' daughter back, but a word from Jesus gave her life. When we have big faith in Jesus, we can be part of God's miracles happening today. God's Spirit works through us to show others what it means to truly have life and life that lasts forever in following Jesus. At home, talk about what part of the story stood out to you the most and how can you apply having that big faith in your everyday lives? And remember, the kids team loves you, but our God loves you even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.